please give it up right now for Jeff Greenspan, everybody. Let him hear it. Hello. <laughs> there has been no real changes to the gun laws in this country. So I'm not surprised that we've had another high school shooting. But I am surprised that we haven't had any high school reunion shootings. <laughs> I would think that type of rage would take 20, 30 years to simmer. <laughs> think about how you've been done wrong, you know? Make a plan. Who's most likely to succeed now, huh? See, so here's the thing. A high school shooting is just rage with no discipline. But a 20, 30 year high school reunion shooting, that's a surgical strike. <laughs> You're not just lobbing bullets indiscriminately into a room. No, you've made a list. You've got names. Where's Linda? Where is Linda? Uh, Linda's right in front of you. Oh my God, Linda? <laughs> is that you? You look horrible. And I think that's why there hasn't been any high school reunion shootings. <laughs> That's why, because here's something you don't know in high school, you only find out after you graduate. Every day after high school gets harder and harder. So by the time your 20 or 30 year reunion rolls around, you know that if you really don't like someone, if you really want to hurt them, just let them live. <laughs> but this one surprised me. This one surprised me. A gunman walked into a art classroom in high school, uh, Texas high school and opened fire and this one shocked me because who knew they were still teaching art in Texas high school? So that's amazing to me. <laughs> amazing, amazing. It's shocking. I'm a native New Yorker, uh, but I spent a long time living in San Francisco. And San Francisco is a great city to perfect your gaydar. <laughs> if you're not familiar with gaydar, it's when you have the ability to just know when somebody's gay. And my gaydar was so bad, I didn't know I was gay until I was 34. So um, <laughs> I tweaked it a little bit in the Bay Area. I was in a gay bar in San Francisco because, uh, well, that's where they put us. And uh, somebody spiked my drink. I got the date rape drink. And then they didn't fuck me. <laughs> Do you know how that shatters your confidence? When someone calls an audible on your rape, it's very, very crushing. It's crushing. It's not a good feeling. Uh, I've been with women before. No more, sorry, ladies. Um, no one's upset. Uh, but I used to be with women. Uh, the last sexual interaction I had with a woman was, uh, was actually very awkward. Um, she, she asked me to fist her. And it was very awkward because, it was awkward because I'm white and she was black. So I didn't know if I was supposed to go in like this or like this or like this, you know, I just didn't know. You never know how to go in, you know? And I've been sucking dick ever since, so uh, that's okay. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's her fault. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but a few weeks ago, a couple who works at Walmart got married at Walmart. Yeah. And this is the first time Walmart has not tried to break up a workers' union, which is pretty amazing. It's, uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Seriously, please try not to shop at Walmart because they break up workers' unions. And I think as workers, we all have to stick together. Are you guys with me on this? Yeah. Great. Workers have to stick together. That's why every time I see striking picketers, I always have my Uber driver honk to show my support. You have to... <laughs> you gotta support them. Uber, I don't know if you know about this, a few weeks ago also, a self-driving Uber killed a woman in Arizona. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, the victim's name was Elaine Herberg, and Uber says it was a horrible accident. I'm not so sure, because a couple of weeks before that happened, Elaine deleted Uber, and now Uber deleted Elaine. So I think that may have been a, uh, that may have been a revenge thing. It may have been, a, I'm, I don't know, it may have been, it may have been. Um, I am now at the age where even the fake age I give to people on dating apps is too old, you know? Like some guy will hit me up, people are like, hey, you look good, how old are you? I'm like, oh, I'm 40. He's like, ah, oh, it's too old. I'm 47. <laughs> I'm 47, so that means when my parents were raising me, there was no internet. 
which means they couldn't Google what's the worst way to raise a child. Uh, they just had to figure it out on their own, you know? Let me give you a little glimpse into what life was like in my household growing up. I was raised Jewish, and traditionally, Jewish kids get one gift every night for eight nights of Hanukkah. Here's what I got on the first night of Hanukkah one year. Front wheel to a bicycle. <laughs> Second night of Hanukkah, back wheel to a bicycle. Third night of Hanukkah, handlebars to a bicycle. And on the last night of Hanukkah, when all I needed were the pedals, I got socks. <laughs> I got the pedals eventually for my birthday in July. But outside of Hanukkah, my family was a sometimes violent place. My dad used to hit me a lot. And later in life, he was on his deathbed and I went down to Florida to say goodbye to him. And he apologized for everything. And I forgave him for everything. And I actually thanked him for everything. And he, he thanked me too. And we had this really great moment of closure. And then he lived. <laughs> yeah, he made a complete recovery. Yeah. You ever leave your office with a coworker and you say goodbye and then you realize you're both walking the same way? <laughs> and you have nothing to say to each other? That's me and my dad for the rest of our lives. I'm Jeff Greenspan, have a great night. Thank you very much.